What's up, Barefoot family? <laughs> I'm here with my dear brother, Josh. So Josh lived with me for a couple years. Let me start that again. What's up, Barefoot family? Dr. Chris here. I have struggled with mental health stuff all my life, anxiety, depression, and I've been really blessed over the past eight or nine years to really explore some of the science of psychedelics, ayahuasca, mushrooms, LSD, ketamine, MDMA, and this stuff has provided enormous value for my life. And probably three or four years ago, I started microdosing mushrooms and LSD. My dear brother here, Josh, of Tribe Meditations and Tribe Microdosing, he actually lived with my family for two years. And when we got to know each other very closely, he's a dear brother of mine. And he's really helped me with how to microdose properly, how to make sure that I use the medicine to make my life better, to be healthier, to be happier, to explore my emotions, to make sure that I'm making my mind smarter and more intelligent, protecting my brain, mushrooms are neuroprotective, and just making my life better. And over the past few years, he's been running these cohorts to do microdosing together to explore how to integrate the medicine when you microdose it into your everyday life. So I wanted to speak with him a little bit here about some of the value that you can get for microdosing, some of the experiences that he's seen and what he's, how he's seen individuals change their lives with microdosing. Love it. Hey guys, how you doing? I'm Josh. Uh, I'm the founder of Try Meditations and Try Microdosing and also, as Chris said, we are really close. We lived together for a while back there, me, him, and his family, and it's been an amazing journey thus far. Um, yeah, I'd say I probably started microdosing about seven years ago, and the first time I started microdosing, I, I'm a huge nerd. Let's start there. And I had been reading a lot. At that point, John Hopkins and a few other universities were discussing their, their reintegration with these studies that they were doing in this, as we call it, psychedelic renaissance that we're having. Um, it was starting to become cool. I looked it up and I wasn't getting the same benefits that I was reading about. I was like noticing mild increases in like empathy. I was noticing that maybe I was a little more mindful at times, but like that was kind of it. So I took a while, I sat down, I studied a bunch and then through trial and error with myself and then through the hundreds of people we've worked with, I've been blessed to identify basically a technology that allows us to maximize the benefits on a neurological level, on an emotional level, on a physiological level that we get from microdosing. And essentially what it comes down to is that microdosing is not a magic bullet. No, not at all. You can't take it, it's not gonna fix your life. But what it does very, very well is that both uh, psilocybin commences or magic mushrooms and LSD, um, essentially amongst the many hundreds of things that they do to your body and your physiology, Two of the main things are, is that they catalyze, they increase neurogenesis and neuroplasticity. Neurogenesis is the birth of new brain cells. So what they used to tell us back in school when I was in high school, that you have a finite number of brain cells, that's a lie. That's not true. We can regenerate. And also neuroplasticity, which is a word that maybe many of you are kind of familiar with. It's when we create new neurological pathways and connections. Now, this is really good. And one of the coolest things is that when you microdose, as an adult, your left brain and your right brain don't really communicate. Most of the communications that you have by adulthood are created by teenage years. So young childhood when your brain's a sponge and then early, early uh, teenage years. But microdosing with intention for a long period of time, let's say 10 weeks or so, eight weeks or so, six weeks or so, will create new bilateral neurological connections, which means you are existing from a place of deeper wholeness. Our left brain, which is more analytical, and our right brain, which is more spiritual or creative, begin to connect and we exist in less of a black and white world. And it's fantastic. Now I can keep going or do you have some other questions? <laughs> so what I'm hearing is that they're finding that these medicines are really good for the brain. Oh my goodness. Helping the brain create new nerve cells, helping the brain connect more, talk more, become more whole. And when we really talk about healing, we're talking about becoming more whole. The more whole we feel, the more we heal, the more at peace we are in life. So I'm curious with the program, what type of people 
have you seen really benefit from this type of program? Oh my God, I love it. So there's like, I mean, a lot of people can benefit because I think the next question I'm gonna have to tell Chris to ask me this time is gonna be about how we leverage that neurogenesis and neuroplasticity, but essentially, so if you're depressed, if you're struggling to find a, a reason to feel passion, or empathy or drive in life, microdosing is incredible, especially within a community-based intentional program where we give you the t we give you the keys to open the door to the tools that can help you reclaim that joy, that effervescent energy that we all deserve to have. So if you're feeling a little depressed or lack of drive, amazing. If you're someone like me who right now I'm, I'm building two different businesses and we're starting to hire people and things are growing, it's fantastic for the freelancers, for small business owners, for executives. You want to have an edge on people? We can help you increase cognitive function, short-term memory, long-term memory, and also out-of-the-box creative thinking. Another person that seems to do massively well right now are maybe women who left the workforce, who had kids, their kids are starting to grow up. We have so many moms of like five, six year olds, you know, they're starting to have more freedom, come and microdose and they're reclaiming their life. They're feeling more in touch with who they are and where they're going. And then they're reintegrating themselves back into either the labor force or starting their own businesses. So those are like three people who do really well. Another person that we get a lot of is the spiritual seeker. So I started my spiritual journey a long time ago. This program is not only for spiritual people. It's not a prerequisite. We do talk about things like energy and consciousness, but as um, tools to evolve and explore. So if someone's looking to deepen their connection with universe, with themselves, awareness with the natural world, microdosing is really beautiful as well. And I can keep going down the line because essentially, Chris, the most the coolest part of this is because we are helping you catalyze, like I said, neurogenesis and neuroplasticity, but that's on an individual level, which means we give you the tools, the community, the one-on-one -on -one coaching, the content, the live content reviews, so you can develop whatever experience you want to enhance. What we're doing for, it's an eight week program, but we start giving you juicy information and things to prepare for about two weeks prior. And then for those 10 weeks, we help you create new neurological patterns, new emotional patterns, new nervous system regulation, so that you can thrive any way you feel you want to. I don't want to define what that means for you, I, thriving for me is mine. For you, it's going to be different. And for you, it's going to be different. And you mentioned the content. So give an example of a small piece of content with an intervention that you would have people with the medicine, with the microdosing, that they would get some type of value from. Oh, yeah. So there's kind of three main portions to the program. The first one, and this I have to tell everybody, the first three weeks of the program are a little crunchy. We like to say crunchy because I don't think they're bad. They could be challenging because... Right now, they, the true, one of the true pandemics that we're having in this society is that there is chronic depression. There's chronic stress, chronic depression, chronic anxiety. Most of that comes from denying your body and mind's ability to tell you your truth and you're living outside of alignment. So the first part of the program is we re-encounter the muscle of compassion. If you can develop decompassion for yourself and others, you instantly suffer less. It is instant within the first pe week, people suffer less. Now, from there, we go into uh, suppressed, repressed emotional work, childhood uh, trauma work. We also do like Jungian type shadow work psychology because if we do not change the unknown, subconscious, underlying behaviors, thoughts, beliefs, and stories, we cannot change our lives. So the second and third week, we dive deep into looking at and illuminating the shadow. Now, shadow's not inherently bad, Chris. Shadow simply means, and this, um, it, depending on where you're finding your definition of shadow, it's a little different, but shadow simply is the parts of ourselves that we are unaware of. And in and, and about five different sources, I've been able to find the same data point, which is by the age of 35, 95%, 90 to 95% of our actions come directly from our subconscious. They are 
external res external stimuli, internal response because of what's there. So if you want to change your life, we have to go in and dig out, as we say, the bottom of the proverbial barrel, but not from this place of seeing things as bad or unhealthy or shame or guilt. You're going to come into a community to be witnessed, to be seen. One of the biggest pieces that we offer people, a lot of people go, wait, you guys do sharing circles and we can talk about that later. They don't want to share. They're like, I don't want to talk about my fears, my guilt, my shame in a public forum. And what I do on the call, I'll tell them. I have a past with addiction. I have a past with suicidal ideation. I have a past with darkness. Like I have been blessed to have been able to experience emotional, physiological, physical pain for many years in my past. I know what it's like to suffer. And I'm like, let's talk about it. Because if you can destigmatize, destigmatize feeling insecure about talking about the things that you're scared to share in the right container, you instantly grow. If you can get comfortable with yourself, it's like a breath of fresh air. And then from there, we move into creatorship and performance. And we, we help people identify what is the life that you want? What are the tools that you need? What are the fears, insecurities, you know, hurdles in your way? And together we do it. You do it, we help you. And then the last part, we look about solidifying all that work, the abundant joy, the depth and the well-being that comes from truly loving oneself, truly beginning to accept oneself. And mind you, as all this is happening, you're going to feel smarter. Your nervous system is going to heal a little bit. You're going to feel less triggered. You're going to have a higher, larger threshold of things happening to you, through you, for you, and feeling stressed. And by that, what I mean is more stuff can happen in life. And it's easier to keep your cool because you're recalibrating your, uh, your sympathetic, parasympathetic nervous system as well as your default mode network. And I'm not going to get into like the deep neuroanatomy and neurophysiology. We can talk about that. Reach out. I'm happy to. I love this stuff. Sorry. I think one of the most important pieces to this is because I know a lot of people in the tribe community is people have said that they've been in therapy, psychotherapy for decades. And the problem with psychotherapy is when you're just normally sober and conscious, you don't necessarily have access to the stuff that's buried in the subconscious mind. So that's part of the power and what these medicines can do. Mm -hmm. I'm curious, have you seen anybody who is not a good fit for doing some of this micro microdosing? That's a great question, Chris. And you know, I also have been blessed to be on a journey in which plant medicine has been a huge part of my life. And for example, there are a lot of people who maybe a macro dose or shamanic ceremony isn't a great fit, but microdosing, especially psilocybin, LSD, there's more um, interaction with different types of medications and stuff that I wouldn't, or like if you have adrenal fatigue already, like there are things that LSD is a little harder on the body, but psilocybin is super safe. Now, if you are currently struggling with very deep, deep, deep depression, like I can't get out of bread depression, this program might not be for you because you have to be in a place where you can like help yourself. Like we can get you there, but if you can't get out of bed in the morning, maybe microdosing on your own or different systems would be better. Another one is if you are struggling to identify reality or your perception of reality, then taking psychedelics is most likely not a good idea in general. Also, if you have severe bipolar, not mild bipolar, and I'm not going to be careful with my verbiage here because I don't know, guys, all the terms for bipolar, but there's mild, I think it's like fast cycle or something, bipolar. Mild bipolar is okay with psilocybin if, like, we'd have to have a couple conversations. And if you are in therapy, I'd, I'd want to speak with your therapist. By the way, I work with a ton of therapists who send me patients. It's amazing. Um, but if you have perfect, like, blah, okay, here we are. <laughs> if you have... Um, a pretty impactful bipolar, it can trigger, psilocybin can trigger a manic episode, which is something I've been reading up on. Yeah, yeah. So, and if you have severe depression, the ketamine clinic is a really good place to go. Yes. Ketamine's really good for severe depression, especially people who have suicidal ideation. Um, and I have never been diagnosed with bipolar, but I probably have a mild bipolar disorder and the medicine is still really great for me. And 
you don't supply, you're not allowed to supply the medicine. So yes. you can help point people in the right direction to where they get it. Yes. So I am not, a, I do not provide anybody with medicine, nor does my company. That's what makes this legal. Yes. So like, that's the big thing. We can point you in a direction of a company that does send capsules that are already mixed with other medicinal mushrooms as well as psilocybin. We are not affiliated to them. We do not get any money from them. We do not do marketing for them. But, you know, also people nowadays, a lot of people know where to get their own. Great. I don't want to know where you get it. I don't know who you got it from. But if you can get your own or if not, we can just lead you in the direction of a company that is selling them. Love it. When's the next cohort? So our next one starts May 30th, but it filled up. <laughs> so yeah, we're, we're, we maybe have one spot left. There's a couple people on the fence, but essentially we're full for May 30th. So this is now we're looking at August, mid August would be the next one. Yeah. Okay, I love it. Yeah. And if people are interested, how they get in contact with you. All right. So either you can reach out and say that you're interested in microdosing through barefoot through Barefoot Healing. Also, we have two websites, uh, sorry, Instagram pages, not websites. We have tribe underscore, underscore microdosing and also tribe underscore meditations. Our website is finally being developed and will be available, but the best way to reach out is just to DM me on Instagram. And also, if you look at my, uh, the, my bio on both Instagram accounts, there's a link to directly book a free 40 minute discovery call because not everybody's a great fit for this program. You really do have to be in a place where it doesn't matter if you're suffering. It doesn't matter if life feels hard. It doesn't matter if the matter if things feel a bit lackluster, but if you do not really actually want to change things, then this probably isn't the place for you. So, okay. yeah. So you heard it folks, microdosing and the medicines have changed my life. Um, oh my God, this, <laughs> my life is so different. Like, wow, it's incredible. I trust this guy immensely. He held my second son, second son Koa, on the very first day he was born. Um, I've seen him take care of a lot of people, a lot of our patients that we've referred to Josh. So he is probably the best person you could probably want to be supporting you on this path to microdose and to discover more about yourself, to heal, become more whole. So I hope this is very valuable and, not, and you've gained some knowledge today. And you can reach out to me if you have any questions or thoughts. And um, I hope you'll connect with Josh. So have a wonderful rest of your day. Also, one last thing, guys. And I really mean this. I truly believe that I'm following my dharma. Like, I really care. What's dharma? Dharma is the karmic path. So it means dharma essentially. Now, this is my definition, my experience of it. I'm sure someone out there could be like, well, technically. So for me, dharma is that I am actually living in alignment with my true path. I get to wake up in the morning. I get to be a part of people's journeys. I get to be an impactful part of people's lives. And I feel really good when I go to bed at night, like really good. What I wanna say though is, even if you know you're not interested in the microdosing program, if you're a little afraid and you just wanna microdose on your own, please reach out because I'm happy to just give you a few safety tips that are really important to make sure that you are having as safe of an experience as possible. So we're here, thank you.